Okay, so I wasn't planning on doing any trapping this year. Fur, play, fur prices are very low. But I thought, let's go over to where my grandfather used to trap. And let's uh, see if we can't get a mink. Yesterday I came out here, I set one trap. One trap only. And uh, today, we got Mr. Mink. Let's go take a look. So there's my mink. I got an Econa Bear with one of those uh, modified triggers that I that I do. I had made a little uh, den here for him. Wow! All the bait is gone. So something else came in and took the bait. Maybe I should put a few more traps down here, obviously. But. Uh, Oh, it might be a little bit of bait left up in there. I might reset it. The springs on these Belle Isle traps are good and strong. So as you can see, that uh, did a real number on them. But on the 120s, they can easily be uh, compressed with your hands. You need to use both hands because the spring hooks are pretty hard to turn. It's a really nice trap. I really like the 120 Belle Isles for Mink and Martin. Those uh, little guide sticks, they have uh, two purposes. First purpose is to uh, ensure that the jaw of the trap doesn't freeze into the uh, mud or the ground. And the second purpose is to allow a little bit of space so that the dog of the trigger is allowed to drop. When an animal walks onto the pan, the dog can drop and has a, a free area, a free space where it can fall into. Uh, so the trap fires and works as advertised. Just make sure that you have the uh, the trigger centered and then you just adjust the trigger so that something as small as a weasel could easily set it off. You don't want to get those little bait thieves uh, getting away with your bait. So if a weasel or a squirrel tries to get into my mink trap I'll catch them. I'd rather catch a squirrel or a weasel than lose my bait to them. A couple of uh, guide sticks here. Just uh, move that uh, spring spring lock, spring hook, and uh, I'll just place the sticks through the springs of the trap so it doesn't interfere with how the trap works when it's, when it's fired and it helps block the animal from going over the top of the trap. I want the animal to go through the jaws of the trap and not over it. A little bit of moss and, and uh, to help block off the, uh, the sides there. And I put these leaves over top of that gray pan because the gray pan is uh, very noticeable. And I just want to conceal the trap the best I can not so much from the animals, but from uh, from the humans that may stumble upon my traps. So although I got no bait left, anytime you get a nice little hole, nice little den area like this, on the side of a uh, inside of a bank. Good, good chance Mr. Mink will come in here and investigate it. So, there you have it. One trap set, one night, and uh, one mink. You know, uh, sets like that, that, that there, they work sometimes even without bait because it's just a natural area that a mink would want to go into as he works his way up alongside the brook. 
All right, the reason why I set the trap where I did, I used uh, some of the rabbit guts there that I got from, uh, from those rabbits that you see me catch in an earlier video. And I just shoved them up underneath the bank and I built a nice little uh, rock cubby. And as a, a mink comes along, he works these, the edge of the bank, the edges of the brooks and stuff. All right, and when you get, I set it on the west side of the brook because the winds are always mostly out of the west here. So if any mink is working the other side of the brook, it should pick up the scent, come across and investigate the trap. All right, uh, it was a perfect double bar catch. I caught up just the way I uh, designed that, that trigger to work. It gets the uh, animal nice and deep into the uh, trap. And you can see here, one bar mark here and one bar or jaw mark there. All right, so right back of the head and right across the, the lower part of the chest. That makes uh, for a quick, clean kill on a beautiful mink. Yes, sir. I'll leave it, I'll leave the uh, trap set again tonight. And who knows, maybe I'll uh, stick out a few more traps and just pick up a few mink. I did notice some uh, coyote uh, droppings out on the uh, on the trail coming in so might be a, a good idea to throw some uh, old moose hides and stuff in here and uh, <coughs> see if I can't pick up a, a coyote or two as I'm coming down here to play with the mink I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that guy I don't know if I'm going to uh, skin him out to, and, and, and sell the pelt <coughs> or if I'll just uh, mount them. I used to do taxidermy work years ago. Now that I'm retired, I got uh, time to get back into uh, some taxidermy. I might do that. Or I might just uh, <coughs> skin them and put the fur out and leave it uh, as, a, as a, uh, a wall mount type thing. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to get into uh, mink trapping or not. Uh, I feel pretty good about it. one trap, one night. And I said it, at, at, it was almost dark last night when I when I left here. I had to uh, turn the, the lights on for the bike. So in less than 24 hours, I produced a, a fine male mink here on uh, on a brook that my grandfather used to trap on. <laughs> 